When I was a kid, I wanted a pet saltwater crocodile. Actually, I wanted several. I had my whole future house planned out for when I was a millionaire on graph paper. I had a big indoor pool slash dirt bike arena slash video game room all combined into one. I had a big expansive backyard with a beautiful lake for my saltwater crocodiles to live in. I had it all set. But as I got older and matured, I realized some things. Like you can't put a dirt bike arena around an in-ground pool because the water would catch all the dirt and it would cost a fortune to fix. I also realized that the largest man-eating reptile on the planet was probably not the best ideal candidate for a pet. So what would make a good beginner pet reptile? I mean, I'm not really concerned about it today because today we're gonna to talk about some that aren't. So as someone that does reptile education full time, normally what I'm trying to teach is reptiles aren't scary or creepy or weird like society puts them out to be or other people say they are. I, but I also have to be honest and teach them that reptiles, some are good for certain things and others aren't. Like if you lived in upstairs apartment in Brooklyn, I'm not going to tell you to get a sulcata tortoise as a pet. Or with me doing hands-on education, I'm not gonna take out a tiger snake or a green mamba for the kids to touch. So this list is going to be a list of reptiles that in my opinion and experience, do not make good beginner reptiles for most people due to various reasons like their size, their requirements, their diet, things like that. So for this list, I'm just going to be focusing on animals that are readily available in most pet stores. Like I see these on a fairly frequent basis and I'm sure a lot of you do too. A few things these animals are gonna share that I'm just gonna start right off the bat with. One of them is these animals are usually dirt cheap. I'm talking 50 to 60 bucks at most pet stores, maybe a little more, but they're fairly cheap. They're fairly easy to find. And one reason that they're so cheap is because a lot of these animals are going to be wild caught or imported. They're not captive bred. It's very cheap and easy to find some of these animals in the wild, bring them over and resell them that way and pet stores can make money that way and unfortunately with these wild caught animals that also means they're probably going to come over with parasites they're going to come over even more stressed out than if they were captive bred babies which is going to make handling and socialization a lot harder for you so another thing that these animals are going to need is going to be uv lighting they need a special light that kind of emulates the sun and a lot of people don't give these animals these uv lighting and that can lead to a lot of health issues so like i said this list is just going to be five of the worst beginner pet reptiles that are at pet stores in my experience and opinion because these animals are so easily found and bought and so many people will then rehome these animals i get called about them a lot so i'm here with pepper my african gray parrot because i actually don't have these first few animals and birds are another pet reptile you don't want to get from the pet store but animal number five chinese water dragon Water dragons are not good with handling. They get very stressed very easily. They also get fairly good size, three to four feet. They need a very big enclosure. They need something like four foot by three foot by four or five feet tall minimum. They needed a lot of climbing space. They also need a very big water area. I'm talking like putting a 40 gallon tank in the enclosure, if not bigger, and they go to the bathroom in that water and they can actually get sick fairly easily if they're drinking dirty water. So you're gonna need a filter on it, but you have to probably use a canister filter because they'll knock a normal filter off and canister filters are expensive to own and they're fairly pricey to run. So along with that big water bin is they also need it very, very humid. I'm talking like 60 to 80% all the time. You're going to need fake leaves in there. You're going to need to make sure that that enclosure can hold the humidity. So you're going to either need to buy it or build it out of probably PVC because wood, it might degrade. You're also going to need to get probably a misting system or a fogger or something. You are going to need a very expensive setup for this lizard. They are also going to need a lot to eat. You're probably gonna to need to start your own dubia roach colony or get a lot of super worms to feed these, especially as they get bigger. When they're full size, you can give them a couple occasional fuzzies and stuff too, but they're primarily going to need a lot of bugs. They also just do not do well in tanks. You're gonna need something bigger. They like solid walls and they're also prone to nose rubbing and rubbing their nose raw on the mesh. So you'll need to make sure you have mostly just about all solid surfaces so that they don't grate their nose up. They don't live as long as most of the other reptiles on this list, about 15 years, but that's still a fair 
fairly sizable time investment. Water dragons also get fairly sizable jowls as they get bigger. They have a very, very strong bite, very sharp teeth. So that's something else you're gonna have to look out for. So moving on to number four, chameleons. Chameleons are just a big bag of difficult. They are the kings of getting stressed. They get stressed out very easily. They don't like being touched. They don't even like being looked at really. They'll huff up, they'll darken their colors, they'll show their teeth, they'll hiss. They'll let you know, don't get any closer or you're gonna get it. And they're kind of a weird one because their enclosure, so they need really high humidity, like really high humidity, like you're gonna have to have a fogger going just about all the time, but they also need open air. They need a lot of airflow. So you can't just keep them in a tank. You need to basically get these special chameleon cages, which are just mesh, and that's very hard to keep humidity in because it's an open air enclosure. So it's a very kind of weird enclosure to manage. They are a little on the pricey end because they're chameleon specific, and you also need to give them a UV light and make sure that they can reach that. So in this cage, you're gonna to have to give them a lot of different things. You're gonna to need to give them branches and vines and stuff that go all the way from top to bottom so they can climb wherever. You're gonna to need to give them fake plants and stuff to mist and help hold humidity, but also for them to hide in. Another reason you need that fogger going or you need to mist a lot is because they don't really drink standing water. They don't really drink from a water bowl. So you're gonna to need to mist them a lot or mist the leaves and stuff. So that is how they get their water. Another thing to look out for is female chameleons will need what's called a lay box. It's basically like getting a litter pan, filling it with soil and sand, and giving them somewhere to lay their eggs because chameleons will just start generating eggs even if there's no male around like I have an iguana that does that and if they don't find somewhere to lay their eggs like if you just have a very thin layer of substrate on the bottom they'll actually hold the eggs in their body until they break open and that is not a fun time for that chameleon that is fatal so just if you get a female chameleon and I am not the person to sex chameleons I've never had a chameleon I don't really ever want to get one they don't do well with education so I'm not the person to go to for that but if you do get a female female chameleon, that's something you're going to have to look out for. Now there are some exceptions to this. There are some nice handleable chameleons out there, but most of the pet store chameleons are going to be veiled chameleons, which are kind of just infamous for being very difficult. But even at their best, they just, they're never going to be something that you take and handle for like half an hour, an hour at a time. Now, a lot of people get drawn to chameleons because of the pretty colors. And like you saw them in that Disney movie Tangled. And a lot of people think they're a really fascinating, cool, cute little animal to have. And that's really just, not accurate. I mean, they do change color, but they typically only do that when they're angry. There's something that I don't even really recommend for most advanced keepers. They live anywhere from three to five years tops. There's just, there's so many other reptiles out there that are better candidates for being pets. So our number three for this list is the number two animal I get asked to take in year after year after bearded dragons, and that is a red-eared slider. Now, obviously this is not a living red-eared slider, this is the shell of one, because I don't have any red-eared sliders, nor will I ever, for the reasons we're gonna talk about. Now, I've been into quite a few pet stores and seen little baby red-eared sliders and probably 12 or 13 of them swimming around in a tank for sale, and they're fairly cheap. And then you go up to their community board in that same store and they'll have a couple postings of people trying to give away their adult red-eared sliders. That is how big of a problem these are in the captive pet trade because so many people get them when they're that cute little baby and don't realize they are a fairly large sized tortoise. They can get much bigger than this shell and that is not something most people are equipped to take care of. Red-eared sliders are just not your typical kind of aquatic pet turtle. They don't stay small like a side neck turtle. If you're looking at a pet turtle, I would recommend a side neck turtle. If you're dead set on getting a turtle, if you need one, side neck turtle is the way to go not a red-eared slider because side necks will stay fairly small. Red ears get, like I said, get a lot bigger than this. They are just not something that should be sold at pet stores in my opinion. When you have a turtle this size, you're looking at 75 gallons minimum. When they get even bigger than this, you're gonna need like multi hundred, you're gonna need like a 300 gallon tank. They also, need a basking spot to get up out of that water to get that UV light that we talked about. You're also going to need a very, very, very powerful, strong filter. You're going to need one of the biggest canister filters. I don't even know if they sell that size at most pet stores because turtles are absolutely gross in the water. They get their water disgusting. So you need a very, very strong filter that can pump water at a very good frequency and clean that water out. And you're going to need to do fairly frequent water changes as well. It is a lot of work having a red-eared slider. Now with that huge tank and all that water, you're gonna need a very sturdy stand or trust yourself to build one. So boom, that's another four to $500 for something to hold 
just hold your setup. Red-eared sliders are a very aggressive turtle species, so they don't really want to play well with others, so you don't want to keep them with other ones. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into pet stores and seen little red-eared sliders with scars and stuff on their arms and legs from where other bigger turtles were bullying and biting them. They also live a very long time, like 40 to 50 years. And because so many people get these turtles and not prepared for what they get and they can't find anyone to take the animal in, a lot of people unfortunately result to releasing them into the wild. And these guys are becoming a huge invasive problem across the US. You can go down even to New York City and you'll see them in the ponds down there. And these get really big and really aggressive so they'll outcompete and bully our native species like the painted turtle. They're also becoming invasive in pockets in Europe and Asia. They are just becoming a really widespread problem. So number two goes to the Savannah Monitor for some of the reason you see right now. I had got this one in from the police seizure case that I talked about in this video right here. And they just do not make very good beginner pets. Monitor lizards are very, very intelligent. They need enrichment. They need a very, very big enclosure. They will use every single inch of that enclosure that they can. They need a lot of substrate to dig around in. They need things to climb on. You can't just keep them in like a kind of plain setup with some fake plants and two hides like you could a leopard gecko. They need a very elaborate setup. So these lizards get three to four feet. It's not massive, it's not like a water monitor or a Nile monitor, but like I said, they need a lot of space. Your similar sized lizards in the three to four foot range probably won't need as much space as these guys. I would go minimum, absolute bare minimum, six by four. Probably eight by four would be even better for them. And they also like a lot of substrate. They will need probably, I would say two feet of dirt because that deep substrate helps hold the humidity. And many people think, because Savannah Monitor, it means that they are dry, they like hot, arid grasslands, but that's just not true. They love high humidity probably 60% minimum. Another thing a lot of people don't do for this lizard is they need it very, very hot. You know, I'm talking basking temperatures, 120, 130 degrees plus. They need it very hot, so you have to be careful that he can't get two of those basking lights. And it's not like a bearded dragon where you can give it a 95 or 100 degree and that's hot. These guys really like it hot. Now these lizards eat a lot, and I'm not talking like frozen feeders like chicks and mice. That's very unhealthy for them. They eat a lot of bugs. You need a lot of bugs. They will eat superworms, night crawlers, earthworms. You'll need to start your own dubia colony just for this lizard because they eat a lot of roaches. And they'll also need some kind of unusual feeding items. You want to get things like snails or maybe quail eggs, things that aren't easy to find at most grocery stores. You'll have to probably go looking for them. Now, one thing that separates these lizards from most other monitors is the socialization aspect. They just get so strong stressed out so easily because I mean like I said a lot of them are wild caught and that doesn't help the situation and just they just don't seem to do well with handling. Now there are exceptions if you go on YouTube or Instagram there are a lot of people with friendly savanna monitors but those are more the exception to the rule. Now they can do a fair bit of damage. This tail is not fun to get tail whacked by as you saw in the last video he was in. They have very sharp claws, which is why I'm wearing this glove right now. And they have a fairly nasty bite that you don't want to be on the receiving end of when they're, especially when they're adults, because they'll bite down and they also don't tend to let go right away. Where do I start? So green iguanas. Now green iguanas are fairly famous as far as reptiles go. They have a very iconic look and unfortunately that doesn't mean that they're a good pet. Now like I said at the beginning a lot of the animals on this list are going to be wild caught or they're going to be super cheap. Green iguanas are both of those. Green iguanas are mostly wild caught out of Florida, the little ones you see at pet stores. Um, and then they're also going to be fairly cheap. You can get one for 20 or 30 bucks. And unfortunately that's actually how the whole Florida thing kind of got going was a lot of people got pet iguanas, realized they didn't want them anymore, they break loose because these get very strong when they get older, and now they're in such numbers down there that we'll never be able to get rid of them. 
So this is a very weaponized reptile. They have a lot of tools at their disposal. They have this very, very long tail that hurts very badly if you get whacked with it. And it is covered in very, very sharp scales. So that is also not fun to deal with. They have these very sharp claws that, again, also not fun to deal with. I trim my iguana's nails probably just about every two weeks and they still cut me up just by crawling on me because the nails are that sharp. And then we have the mouth. These guys have a very nasty bite. That is some very, very strong teeth and a very very strong jaw especially when you have an adult male iguana if he gets a good hold of you that is a trip to the emergency room they do a lot of damage and this isn't even a full-size iguana. Levi here is on the fairly small side. They can get much bigger than this. And you could handle your iguana every day from the day you get it, and you could still get a very aggressive male when it comes to breeding season, and they might not come back out of that aggressive phase. So big lizard means really big appetite. They eat a lot. Now, you can't just feed them one thing like iceberg lettuce and expect that to be okay. That's actually why Levi is so small. His previous owner just fed him iceberg lettuce for six years, which isn't even really that good good for us to eat. So they need a huge variety of things. They need collard greens, dandelion greens, mustard greens, escarole, endive, huge variety of fruits and vegetables. They need a lot of variety and that can get very expensive going down the produce aisle. So a big lizard means big enclosure. They are going to need a very big home. You can't just keep these in a giant fish tank and think that's okay. You're gonna need something custom built. You're gonna need something to build yourself probably if you can't find somewhere. You're going to need something that's got a lot of climbing room. Right now, Levi is in a six by five by six that I built myself. And right now, Levi's about 10 years old and he's still fairly small. He's only about five and a half pounds because like I said, his previous owner did not take good care of him. So he did not really grow as much as he was supposed to in the first six to seven years of his life. I got him when he was around seven. So I don't know if I'll ever need to get something that big, but if you get an iguana, be prepared to have something the size of your bedroom. They need a lot of climbing space, a lot of moving around. And they also need a very high humidity in that enclosure. They like it very warm, they like it very humid, and it can be very hard to keep your heat and humidity up in a very large enclosure. I get told by a lot of people that they used to have an iguana free roaming the house when they were younger, or a lot of people still think you can free roam an iguana in your house. You can't. It's not safe for the animal, it's not safe if you have other pets, and it's also very hard, if not impossible, to maintain the heat and humidity levels these lizards need in your house, especially if you live up in the Northeast like me. Florida, maybe, I'm not sure, but definitely up north, you cannot get away with it. They need an actual enclosure to keep the humidity in the 70s or 80s and to keep the heat really hot for them. I've also been told by a lot of people that they had an iguana growing up that died of old age. And I mean, iguanas are a very long lived reptile. They can live 40 years at least. So, I mean, if you have an iguana that's dying at 10 or 15 years of age because of old age, that's really not old age. Iguanas also get really big really quickly. That little baby you bring home from the pet store is going to get massive within a couple of years. So you're going to need a plan in place. So I got really lucky with Levi. He's an awesome education animal, been pet by thousands of kids. He's very good at shows. Never so much tried to bite or tail whip or anything like that with me. And it gives kids an idea of, okay, this is a smaller iguana. They get a lot bigger than this and you don't want to get one of these. Can I help you? So yeah, don't get a green iguana. <laughs> So in closing, if you want to get any of the reptiles I listed today, I would think long and I would think hard that you have the time and the effort and the space to take care of these animals because they are all very demanding in their own way. So like the video if you learned something, I will be doing a top five best beginner pet reptile list at some point and I'm also going to be doing a sequel to this video, top five worst beginner pet reptiles that I see at expos. So if, subscribe if you want to stay tuned for those and some of the other animal videos I'll be putting out. Comment down below if you agree or disagree with the list and if you think there's any animals I might have missed. Granted, I might get to those in the second video. And remember, make your reptile room wider before you get a red-eared slider. You don't want to start with an iguana. Okay, I think I'm going to stop myself there. See you later. <laughs> pretty sizable little jowls. Pretty sizable, no, nasty bite. They have very sharp teeth. Make sure that you're mostly solid surface walls. Reptiles on this list. And birds are another pet reptile you don't want to get from the store. For that. Are you trying to eat my plants? Is that what you're trying to do? You'd do best to pause before dealing with an iguana's claws. 
You don't want to ask Santa for a monitor from the savannah. Something you don't want to carelessly wander in is to be the owner of a chameleon. Don't get on the bandwagon. Don't get a water dragon. <laughs> so dumb.